Hello. Hey, how are you? Hey, I am good. I probably should have thought about what I was going to say before we hit record, but, you know, life's fine. Nothing, nothing too big, too small going on. How are you? I am doing great. My whole family is off this week. Except my son got a new job at Wonders of Wildlife. And so the only person working this week is my 16-year-old son. And he's working almost every day. Oh. Uh, so, But it's a brand new job and he loves it. And so that is great. I am absolutely thrilled that he's got a job that he likes. And it has great benefits. He eats for free whenever he's on the clock. He gets to go into the Wonders of Wildlife Museum anytime he wants, and he gets to always bring a guest. Uh, so he's got a good gig going for him for 16 years old. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah, I should say we are recording this during Thanksgiving week, even though this is not when it's going to come out. And so you're looking at a week off. I got to work like like it's a normal week because, you know, 911 doesn't have holidays. We don't get to take the days off. But our Thanksgiving tradition, if I've not mentioned it before, is to place bets on which police precinct is going to have the first turkey thrown out of a door or window. That is a very common 911 call on Thanksgiving. So, uh, so you know, the call families. Is somebody threw a turkey at me? Well, mostly it is I can't stand my family and they're doing awful things. And somehow or another, it involves a turkey being thrown out of a door or window. Or one year, the turkey was thrown into the litter box, which had not been emptied in some time. But the officers very kindly took pictures so that we could all see this monstrosity of a Thanksgiving feast. You have a weird job. I know, right? You just have a weird job. But <laughs> Well, despite the fact that it's Thanksgiving for both of us, it is getting ready to launch into the Christmas season. So I am calling to talk about Christmas movies. Okay, so you gave me a heads up a couple of weeks ago saying that you wanted to talk about this. And I agreed, but I agreed with ulterior motives. Because... Which you have not told me as yet. No, I have not. I've intentionally told you that, you know, I've got something to say, but I'm not going to tell you until the podcast. Look, I'm a Christmas Scrooge. I don't really love a lot of the holiday trappings and... I just in general don't like watching TV or watching movies. I get incredibly bored doing that. And my family always wants to watch holiday movies. They find it very relaxing, very celebratory. It's a good opportunity to get the family together. They love this event and I hate it. So <laughs> I have maybe three movies that I can tolerate and the rest it's just not so much. So I'm looking to you. I, what I want out of this episode is a list of movies that I can go and watch with my family this holiday season so that they will get off my back about the fact that I'm such a Scrooge. Oh, man. Well, I don't know how helpful I am going to be because I like Christmas, but I'm also not a huge Christmas trappings fan. We decorate our house the day after Thanksgiving, and I enjoy that. But as far as Christmas movies go, if my list is five movies that I actually like, I'm going to be impressed with myself uh, because <laughs> I'm not a big Christmas movie guy either. And I am was actually kind of hoping for something similar here. I <laughs> This is like an episode of The Blind Leading the Blind. Yes, this is we're going to actually title this episode Two Cranky Middle-Aged Men Complain About Christmas Movies. Um <laughs> I, but, now I now I'm picturing like in the the Muppets Christmas Carol the the really old mm -hmm. grandpa guy with like no teeth like complaining the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the image that's going to prevail in my head throughout this whole conversation. Oh, yeah. That's us. That's us, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, let's just take turns throwing out a movie 
and see if we can at least get to five movies. Because what I would like to do, we have a whiteboard on the side of our fridge. And my wife and daughter will watch probably a Christmas movie every day they are home together. Mm. Yeah, my wife and daughter do the same thing. And I would love to post a list that basically says, call me when you get to these ones. (laughs) Um. okay all right uh yes that sounds great well okay so i know there's a slam dunk already on the board right i know that we're both going to put elf on the list and it might even be at the top of the list it is absolutely i love elf it is fun it's funny it is the perfect christmas movie the thing that struck me about elf however if i can Proceed to blow your mind. Okay. (laughs) Do you remember the like kind of stop motion Christmas movies we grew up on? Oh, like Rudolph? Uh, Like Rudolph and all of those. Yep. Yeah. So those movies were made in the early or in the mid 60s. Okay. So those movies were getting to the point where they were somewhere between 20 and 30 years old when we were watching them. And they were like, for me, whether I liked them or not, they were the Christmas classics that had existed forever. Yeah. Right? They were yeah. synonymous with Christmas. I think this year, Elf has become that for the generation underneath us. Yeah. Elf isn't the new movie. It is the movie that has always been there. I'll tell you, in our family, it sure feels like it. Like we have watched Elf. I think my kids, their tradition is Thanksgiving night. We always have to watch a movie with Shelly's sister and her kids. And it's always Elf. And so Thanksgiving night, we always watch Elf. And that's just, it's drilled into my kids that that's what happens. So it's always been there in their book. Yeah. And I think that somewhere in my head, it is still a new Christmas movie. Oh, yeah, for sure. But what do you like about what do you like about Elf? Oh, no, exactly what you said already. Like it, it is funny. It's not trying to be like it's not hallmarky. I can't stand like the Hallmarky movies. I'm sure nobody listening to this podcast is shocked by this. But in (laughs) fact, I saw this great meme on the internet the other day. It had like a bunch of scientist-y looking people with lab coats on. And it said, scientists at Hallmark are close to discovering a new movie plot. And which is just great. So it's it's not Hallmarky. It's not trying to be overly like sappy it's just silly and fun and yet at the end it's still heartwarming like it's still like it's just a good movie and it's got such great quotable lines that like come up all throughout the year so i yeah it's just fun okay i have only one movie that beats elf Ooh. okay and i am a hundred percent sure i like it more than elf uh and i love Elf. But it does have Will Ferrell in it. And so it may be just that Will Ferrell's awesome. But this is, uh, I think it came out last year on Apple TV and it's Spirited. Have you seen Spirited? I have not. It is glorious. It is absolutely hilarious. It is fun. It is warm-hearted without being at all hallmarky. It's a musical, and it is gently making fun of musicals and Christmas movies all at the same time while being a great Christmas movie. So it is, without wanting to give away too much because it is just worth seeing, it is a continuation of the Christmas Carol story into the present day. Okay. And what you find out fairly quickly is that they have turned this into a modern kind of big organization that ghosts have. And they prep all year to take one horrible, rotten person and redeem them 
through showing them their past. And it's just wonderful. Just wonderful. It has a ton of really great stars in it, but it is just, I mean, it's just hilarious. You cannot get through the Christmas season without seeing Spirited. It's just delightful. I'm super excited. This is exactly what I came to this episode for. Like, I'm actually excited to watch that movie. I will sit down this holiday season and watch that movie with my family. And since my wife yes. listens to this, like, she's going to hear this and go, all right, great. That's what we're doing tonight. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, so you will have to get a, like, free trial for Apple TV or whatever, but uh, it's just a riot. Fun and funny enough that now I want to go home and watch it with my family tonight. And so nice. that's delightful. And and I'll say this, having listened to the soundtrack, it was my my daughter's favorite music, probably for six months of the year. So from January to June, it was chart topping in my car every time my daughter was in my car. <laughs> so Okay. I have heard the music a lot, and I'm not sick of it. Oh, all right. Okay, yeah. solid recommendation. So, well, so, okay. Yes, five stars. So I want to go completely the opposite direction in terms of chronology, right? We started with Elf, which we think is a new movie, but it actually is way older than we think. <laughs> and then we went to Spirited, which sounds like it is a newer movie. But what about way back like you mentioned the stop animation ones like rudolph the red-nosed reindeer or i really like the uh rudolph and the island of misfit toys i really enjoy that one or there's like the charlie brown christmas and those kind of things like what do you think about those little animated shorts if you will so i have to put these into two categories so first you tell me what do you think of them and then i will Fulfill our name of this episode. Well, okay. So these are the classic ones from my childhood. And so I enjoy watching them for nostalgia's sake, like the Frosty the Snowman or the, particularly the Rudolph and the Island of Misfit Toys. That, these are just fun. I, I enjoy them. They've got some good characters and stuff in them. And the stop animation is interesting. So I enjoy it. I, I can't watch them more than once, but I can watch them once and feel the nostalgia and, and enjoy that. Uh, Charlie Brown, my daughter insists on Charlie Brown every year. She is very into the Charlie Brown episodes. And so they're fine. I neither love them nor hate them. Again, I can watch it once and I can be just fine, but it's not something I necessarily look forward to. All right. So the stop animation Misfit Toys one, I have not seen in a really, really long time. And I'm guessing I would think it's cute. I hate the Peanuts Christmas, Charlie Brown Christmas special thing. I absolutely hate it. I think you get kicked um, out of heaven for that. <laughs> I will give a single exception to the moment where Linus is reciting Luke chapter two. Uh, yeah. Because otherwise I would, you know, you can't hate the birth of Jesus. Um, <laughs> but I just can't stand it it's so sappy and yeah. it's like it's very melancholy well like, yes yeah it's very melancholy and i do not tolerate that feeling of melancholy well at all like i hate that feeling and so any movie that's going to be like glorying in the melancholiness of life i just oh, i can't do it i probably have not seen the full charlie brown christmas in 15 to 20 years because whenever it comes up whenever it comes on i i will leave the room okay so that's how i feel about it's a wonderful life it, it again mm. it just the melancholiness of that movie and actually the despicable ways that he treats his family throughout that movie 
I can't enjoy the movie because he's such a jerk. So no, I absolutely hate that movie. If it's on, I will walk right out of the room. No, thank you. I am with you on this, except that this has some nostalgia for me. So really? my in-laws, for years, I don't know that they still do it, for years when I was in high school, my in-laws on New Year's Eve would always watch It's a Wonderful Life and Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court, the old, old one. Mm. I don't know that there is a new one, so I don't know that I needed to clarify that now that I think about it. <laughs> but, um, And so... When I, I started dating my wife junior year, and I was friends with her, and all of our friends were like, her house was one of the places a lot of our friends hung out. So I saw those two movies on New Year's Eve, multiple years in high school. And so I have enough nostalgia to just slightly tip the scales on It's a Wonderful Life, that I can tolerate it, but I am with you. Like The heart and soul of the message of that movie seems to be he did a lot of great things for his community while being a total jerk as a dad, and that makes him a good person. And so he deserves a second chance. And I'm like, I'm not sure it works that way. Yeah. I'm not sure you can do enough good in the community to make it okay that you leaked all your stress all over your family and were just a jerk. Unless, the only exception I can come up with is unless you're Bruce Willis in a Die Hard movie, and then it's okay. <laughs> you have done enough service to your community <laughs> And now we're into great Christmas movie territory. Oh, man. Okay, so you're going to have to tell me why you love Die Hard. Okay, well, I love Die Hard in the way that you can somewhat tolerate It's a Wonderful Life. I grew up watching Die Hard dubbed from TV. And so, like, I watched it so many times growing up. And then when my mom married my stepdad... Uh, he had the whole box set of them on VHS. So then I got to watch the non-dubbed from TV version, which was like infinitely better. And I just, I've watched those movies so many times. And because it's set at Christmas and people debate about whether or not it's a Christmas movie, I absolutely join in on the, yes, it's a Christmas movie bandwagon because everybody watches Christmas movies for the sake of nostalgia. They just, that's why they go to these same movies over and over and over every year. Well, it's a tradition. It's nostalgic. I enjoy watching them. Well, that's how I feel about Die Hard. So sit down. We're watching a movie. <laughs> now, will your family permit Die Hard into the rotation of Christmas movies? Like, will your whole family sit down and like dig in with you? So it is so hard to get dad to watch a Christmas movie with everybody that they're like, look, if, if this is what it takes to get dad to sit down and watch a movie, fine. We'll watch Die Hard. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. So first of all, I have zero nostalgia for Die Hard because I have never seen it. Never. The, never. I have not seen any part of it. As a matter of fact, I tried could sit down and watch it this week, anticipating that it would come up in this conversation. And I got so bored. Okay. I mean, I got okay. 10 minutes in and I was so bored. This is um, not okay. This is not okay. You know how when people say when you're dating, I've heard secular people say this, like you have to get, you have to see your partner drunk before you get married to know like how they are or whatever. And I'm thinking like this, whatever litmus test you want to put in there, like there needs to be a best friend litmus test. And I cannot believe that 20 plus years later, I am just finding out that you've never watched Die Hard and can't even make it through 10 minutes of it. Uh, this well, is unacceptable. again. But I'll tell you what, if you watch Spirited, I will make it through at least 
I will get to the halfway point before I shut it off the next time I try Die Hard. And if I'm still bored out of my mind, presumably I won't be. I mean, I know why I'm bored. I'm bored because it's setting it's setting up like an 80s movie instead of like a 2020s movie. We just do movies differently. Storytelling has evolved in the last 40 years. And so it's tough for me to have a story told in the way that stories were told back then, because there is just heaps of setup that seem irrelevant to me. But I know, I know it is a great movie. I know that it is a beloved action movie. Like anybody who's an action movie fan will say it is like the grandfather of all action movies. Like it's, it's the number one action movie. So it must be good. I mean, I, I'm on that bandwagon. Uh, like I, I love that movie and it did kind of spawn like a whole genre for me. So yeah. no, it, it, I know it's well done. I know it's good. I have to try again. Normally I want to read a book after talking to you. Now I want to go watch Die Hard. Um, well, I don't <laughs> want to, but I'm going to go watch Die Hard, but. Well, okay. So now I have three, I have three movies now on my list, Elf, Spirited and Die Hard. So what else add to my list? Okay, this is a, this falls into the pure nostalgia category. I'm embarrassed to put this on my list, but I absolutely love Tim Allen's The Santa Claus. Oh, I heck yes. I think it's amazing. Yes. Um, okay. One, two, and three. Just one, just one and two. Uh, where is it on my list? No, uh, they made three different Santa Claus movies. Oh, um, number one, absolutely. I don't remember two and three very well. And have you seen, so they made a show. Oh, Disney. yeah. My, my family was telling me about that. Um, I refused to watch it, but yeah. What do you think of it? I haven't seen it. I ha I. I have not seen it, despite the fact that, like I said, I mean, I absolutely love the Santa Claus. I think it's delightful. I think it's fun. I think it's funny. Oh, yeah. it's It rivals Elf for me. Yeah. I have to watch that every year, and it rivals Elf. And I will watch one and two, but I uh, number three is just trash. Like, they should have never made that one. So, yeah, the Santa Claus one and the Santa Claus two. All right, I'll have to go rewatch two. I'm sure we'll rewatch one. But uh, I am mildly curious what it means that virtually every movie that has been made about Christmas in the last several decades is about how Christmas is about to be ruined because people have stopped believing in Christmas. Like, hmm. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of that going on. But yeah, so I that absolutely hits my list. I think that puts four, by the way, on your list. I think we're up to four. We, You thought it was only going to be three, and we've gotten four good Christmas movies on your list. Yeah, I actually have five because uh, the Santa Claus one and the Santa Claus two. So, yeah. Okay, well, let me see. Let me try again here. What do you think of Home Alone? Okay, so that came out when I was a kid, and... I enjoyed it as a kid. I think I overwatched it as a kid. My mm. brother and I are very different people, but we we could come together over certain things. And Home Alone was one of the things that like we could like totally enjoy together. And so we together watched that a lot. And so I did rewatch it, I think last year, maybe the year before. And I thought it was super fun and really enjoyed it. But it's not something I go to automatically because I'm like, oh, yeah, I've seen that. But then when I watch it, I'm like, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it sort of it flips the script for me a little bit because the majority of the older Christmas movies, and this is right on the line of being an old Christmas movie. And it did. It came out when we were kids. I saw it with my parents and my sister in the theaters, whatever year it came out. I think we went on of the Christmas week between Christmas and New Year's. And it flips the script because a lot of the movies before that were that sort of melancholy that we were talking about. This one, 
the first 10% is that melancholy. And then the last 90% is not. Hmm. And I have to emotionally get through that first 10%. And I have to give it the premise. Premise is a little absurd. I forgot my kid and didn't even notice when we got on the plane. (laughs) Right? Like, I have to just go with the fact that that is the starting premise of the movie. And for Pete's sake, I'm a fantasy fan. They ask us to believe all sorts of things that are absurd. So if we just take that as a starting premise, which is why the movie starts like 10% of the way in the movie for me, like I just take that as given, then I can go with the rest of the movie and I love the rest of the movie. Uh, Yeah. So that one, I might make popcorn during the first bit for my family and then come and watch it with them. Oh, you might have to do that with Die Hard too. I might. It might help me if I just fast forward through the first 10 or 15 minutes. But now I've watched the first 10 minutes. So I'm just going to start where I left off. Oh, there you go. Um, There you go. And hopefully I'll be fine. Well, all right. So you've mentioned the word melancholy so many different times now. And so here's a movie that actually features melancholy, but I actually kind of like, and my kids are obsessed with it. Every Christmas Eve, it is their tradition to all gather in the same sleeping space They usually like blow up air mattresses and like file into somebody's room. And they all three, like they set up the TV, they get in their Christmas pajamas and they sit down and they watch White Christmas. And I think it's the coolest little tradition that they formed among themselves. And they absolutely look forward to this every single year. And I think it's cool that such an old classic movie with so much nostalgia for so many people actually has a nostalgic factor for my own kids. But I always get sad every Christmas Eve because I'm like, but I want to watch it. How come it's just the kids? Um, So are you you formally excluded? Yeah. No, this is a kid tradition because because the adults have to set up Christmas Eve. Like, right? We have to play Santa Claus. You started this tradition and don't remember it. That's what happened here. You found a way to get your kids into their rooms by themselves when they were like five, seven, and nine or whatever. And you just don't remember because it was a long time ago. That's my theory here. It's possible. But I got to tell you, we just are last minute kind of people. And pretty much every Christmas Eve, we're still rapping. And I'm sure that they're just bored and they decided to form their own <laughs> or tradition. That. or that oh man so I haven't seen it are you kidding me I haven't seen it not even for lack of like I mean I don't particularly want to see it but I'm not like I don't abhor the thought I just haven't seen it it was not Like, my parents aren't super into it. My in-laws aren't super into it. It just never hit my radar. I didn't even think of it until you just brought it up. Like, I I didn't. It's just not part of my world. Wow. Well, I would would totally, like, push for you to watch it. But if you can't get through 10 minutes of Die Hard because it's too old of a storytelling, oh, boy, (laughs) you're never going to get through White Christmas, so... Maybe I should watch them back to back. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. What about... Okay. So this is not an old movie, but this is kind of... I'm just curious. What are your thoughts on Polar Express? Okay. So, uh, Shelly, turn off the podcast now. Um, <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. So Marital Shelley... Discord is coming, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Okay, so Shelly is, uh, her degree is in elementary education. And so she's done a lot of reading of like children's books, not from the perspective of like, oh, let me just read kids books because they're easy. But like, let me look at illustrators and authors and analyze their work and see who does quality stuff. And she loves the Polar Express because as children's literature, 
it is just a shining example of of the good that can be. And so she just adores it. And then for them to take the same type of illustrations that were in this book and make them into a televised version with the same kind of features, she just absolutely adores it. So she loves the story. She loves the animation. She just loves how it came to life because she adored the book. Me, I like aspects of it. I think there are some fun things about it, but I feel like the movie is really long and kind of boring. This is one I fall asleep to almost every single time. Because again, like the storytelling is so slow. It just drags. Like I couldn't even tell you the full storyline because the middle part of the movie, I I don't know that I've ever seen. (laughs) I just, I fall asleep. (laughs) So uh, yeah, uh, I'm I'm sad to kind of trash on a movie that my wife adores. I know it's one of the ones that we're going to sit down and watch as a family every year. And I, uh, I struggle. All right. Well, Shelly, if you're tuning back in, just jump ahead two more minutes. Um, <laughs> I, I just have to say, I think the animation is a little creepy. It, sure. It's just a little. You, are you familiar with the concept of Uncanny Valley? No. Okay. So it's the idea that as people, we love things that aren't real or human becoming more real or human until they're too close. So animation that doesn't look real, great. Animation that looks perfectly real, great. But almost real is a little weird. It just feels mm. a little weird. It, you know, it, that is true. I feel that way about that show. It is a little weird. It, maybe it should have been left in 2D. Or on, you know, in a book. Yeah, it's just, it's just a little weird. Uh, so that's my only thought. All right, I've got one more that I want to ask you about before we finish up. Okay, all right. How do you feel about Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas? <laughs> you know what? I actually like this one. Yeah, I just think it's fun. I, again, he's kind of an over actor like uh, Will Ferrell is an Mm over-actor. And so sometimes I can stand that and sometimes I can't. But I felt like for The Grinch, it totally worked. And it's a fun movie. I enjoy watching it. Nice. Yeah, I deeply dislike the animated version of this. Like, again, that falls into the sort of, I don't know that it's melancholy, but somehow it's just, too hallmarky or something. I don't know. It's too something. But throw Jim Carrey in there, who is perfectly competent at being a living cartoon himself. <laughs> and I think he was exactly the right call for this movie. And I, I think he did a good job. I thought it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Fun is exactly right. All right, so read me your final list. How many movies do you not hate? (laughs) Well, it sounds like my list came out to being seven movies long. Your suggestion of Spirited made the list. So this is a brand new one for me, which is great. So Elf, Spirited, Die Hard, both uh, the first and the second Santa Claus, the Grinch, Jim Carrey version, And I'm going to commit this year, I want to watch White Christmas. My kids are not going to get to watch this without me. Or I'm going to watch it without them. Something is going to happen where I get to watch White Christmas this year. All right. And we're going to, if we take a moment here and turn to the audience, all week, I'm going to put up some polls to let you vote on what the best Christmas movie is. And we're going to do this kind of in a head-to-head matchup kind of a way. So by the end of this week, we will have determined scientifically (laughs) from this list of our at least acceptable movies, which movies you think are the absolute best. So make sure that you 
go on social media and vote for your favorite Christmas movie and uh, help us out this week. We don't ask you to do this a ton, but I would love to get a lot of people voting. So if you could actually share these so that other people see them and we can get their votes, that would be wonderful because we want to get as many people voting on what the best movie is so that this Christmas movie, nobody misses the best Christmas movie ever. Yeah, I think that would be an absolute blast. And typically about this time, we ask if you enjoyed this episode or any of our other episodes to share them. But I'm just going to say, if you enjoyed any of our other episodes, please send those around. I'm kidding. This uh, this is just so not us. <laughs> this is not our normal. Obviously, this was the blind leading the blind today. Yep. Two middle-aged men complaining about Christmas movies. <laughs> Uh, but what is a little bit more us is to get the thoughts and just ask, what else have you been thinking about? What else is rolling around in your head besides Christmas movies? Well, for me, I've been reading a book, uh, that is wonderful and it is about the disc profile. How familiar are you with the disc profile? Uh, vaguely. So I like it because it's simple. And I need a simple version of a personality test that I can keep in my head. I cannot keep all the details about some personality tests in my head and use it as an actual grid to work through where people are coming from and how to respond to them. You know, if it's too complicated, it's not going to help me very much. First of all, the book that I'm reading is delightful because it's titled Surrounded by Idiots. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, that's awesome. I, I love it. And one of the things, one of the basic arguments he makes in the book is no matter what personality type you have, you are always going to be in the minority. And so you have to be prepared to deal with people who are very different from you. And you can either think of them as idiots or you can understand where they're coming from. Mm. And the disc is real simple. It basically has an x-axis and a y-axis. And the x-axis on the far left is task-oriented, and on the far right is people-oriented. And on the y-axis at the top is action-oriented, and at the bottom is reflection-oriented. And it breaks people down based on that. And that's super helpful when you're dealing with people to think about, is this a task person or a people person? Is this an action person or a reflection person? And how does all of that work? So I've found that to be really helpful. Nice. I really do love his statement about how we relate to other people. That was a good compliment to everything we've done with our Miroslav Wolf study. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what I've been thinking about. What about you? What have you been thinking about? Well, on a previous episode, it might have even been a Witch Josh question, we acknowledged the fact that I do not have a favorite verse. And mm. then just a couple of weeks ago, I ran across a verse. I've been studying the book of Isaiah and listening to the lectures by John Oswald. And I came across some verses that I'm like, this is it. So the reason why I I didn't have a favorite verse was that I didn't feel like any one verse or any two verses summed up the whole well enough to be considered good enough all by itself. But these verses do that. And so this is Isaiah 26 verses three and four. But I have to go with the new revised standard version. This makes it doubly my favorite verse. There's some complicated Hebrew that a lot of the translators take Ooh. different ways. And so I'm not a Hebrew expert, so I don't know how to tease them out. But what I liked the best was the New Revised Standard Version. And so here we go. Those of steadfast mind, you keep in peace. In peace, because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in the Lord God, you have an everlasting rock. Mm. I love this. From 
everything from this idea of a steadfast mind or a mind that is just set on God, really, you keep in shalom. And then shalom is again the next word. So you keep in shalom. Shalom because they trust in you. It's really highlighting this central idea of shalom for anybody who has resolutely set their mind on Christ and trusting in God forever. And so the word Yahweh is prominent, the word shalom is prominent, and the word trust is prominent. And when you put all of those things together, it's so good. That's really powerful. Yeah. I was super happy. I'm like, okay, this can be my favorite verse. I now have one. (laughs) Welcome to the Good Christian Club. I know. I was hoping I would get an admittance card. You have finally made it. And someday you'll watch Die Hard and you can join my club, which is the Bad Christians Club. (laughs) Yeah, we'll see. I'll try. All right. Well, in other news, we have a Witch Josh question. Yes. And this week's Witch Josh question is, Witch Josh once walked full force into a glass door. And this would be me. <laughs> this is this so, is going to be great. I can't wait. <laughs> I have to preface this by saying that at, this was when I was a full-blown adult. As a child, my grandparents had those sliding screen doors going from, uh, they had kind of a three-season porch. And I walked full force through the screen door twice as a child. Wow. Like, full on, taking it right off the hinges, tearing through, like, so I should know better. (laughs) And clearly I did not. (laughs) So I was pastoring up in Lynn, and we had a midweek service, and it was over. And there are a set of glass doors going from the auditorium into the lobby. And those were open. And the light switches, however, are at the opposite end of the auditorium from the exit into the lobby. So I shut off the lights and was walking quick because I was somebody was waiting for me that I was going to take home. And so I was walking quick, almost jogging to get over to him. Uh, so that we could get out of there because he'd been waiting for me and waiting for me. I mean, you never want the pastor to take you home. This is always a horrible <laughs> plan. Um, right. But he had been patiently waiting and patiently waiting. And unfortunately, unbeknownst to me, in order to help me out, he figured it would help me if he shut all the doors for me. And so <laughs> I'm in the dark and I am going completely by the fact that I've been through this building a million times and I've just memorized it. And I am almost running and he has shut the glass doors and he's on the other side. So my eyes are fixed on him and I slam in to the glass door so hard. I almost got a nosebleed and I ended up with like a big bump on my forehead. (laughs) I mean, it was almost cartoonish. (laughs) How hard, like, I mean, I like bounced off of it and, you know, and and then went about my day. So I actually have a, I have like so many stories of hitting my head on things like this. It's kind of embarrassing. We could literally do a full episode of the top 10 times Josh from Missouri has hit his head because he was in a rush. (laughs) <laughs> I must have had so many concussions by the time I was 30. It's embarrassing. Oh my gosh. I want that on film. I really do. Like, I just want him to have been recording on his camera, but I imagine there's no, there's no film, but I'm, no, I'm making up I, a great visual in my head. So yes, I am. I think it probably lived up to it because I was so startled. <laughs> like it wasn't like I was being ca- like I was just so confused. Like it felt like I was walking into a force field as far as I could tell because I had no idea what was going on. Oh my gosh. So, assuming I don't concuss myself and incapacitate myself between now and next week. Are we on for next week? We sure are. I'll talk to you then. All right, I'll talk to you then. What?
Alright, bye.